Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 30th, and it's a cold, dreary day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Raining, rain all weekend, cold. It's only in the 40s this morning, and uh, boy, not at all what I expected for Memorial Day weekend, but such is life. It's going to warm up a bit tomorrow, so looking forward to that. Uh, might even be a bit sunny in the afternoon, so that's a good thing. Smoking my Nirup. Um, got actually very close to the bottom of a bowl of Pegasus that I, that I started out with this morning, so I'll be switching over to Haunted Bookshop shortly. 8 o'clock coffee. So today, I thought it would be fun to uh, talk a bit about value in, in tobacco pipes. This is something I think about a lot. Boy, I really should have planned this better. I'm already done here. I was getting things ready and, you know. So, yeah, value in tobacco pipes. So there's a couple things we got to define. Um, the first being the term value. And what do I mean by the term value? And... All right, bookshop. I am, uh, when I'm talking about value, I'm not just talking about price, you know, and that's often value gets a bad name because, you know, if you say, oh, I bought a value this or a value that, people immediately think you bought something cheap uh, or you bought, bought something that was priced to buy rather than priced for quality. And that's not what I mean. What I mean is the overall value of, of that item to you, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's an objective personal thing. So I using this pipe as an example, you know, this is a pipe that it's in Europe. Um, it's well made, but very reasonably priced. And I would probably put this at a, a moderate value for myself, but for the fact that my wife bought this for me. She bought this for me when we were on a trip out to uh, California and she bought it at uh, Kramer's Tobacco Shop. Uh, just a few months before they closed down. So there's a lot of value associated with this pipe because of those memories. You know, my wife picking it out and getting excited because she thought the little adornment was, was pretty, and it is. Uh, having a chance to talk to the woman who was Kramer's daughter, um, and boy, I, I always forget her name, but wonderful woman. Uh, had a long chat with her. Uh, talked about her father and, and the shop and the history of the shop and the blends and she at that time couldn't tell me that uh, smoking pipes was going to be taking over a lot of her father's blends but she did tell me that that was ha that someone was going to take them over and they were going to continue on so it was really a wonderful day and and that's all tied up in this so that's all part of the value of this pipe you know when I pick it up I think about all those things um, I've got other pipes that are you know really inexpensive if you bought them on eBay today they'd be like in the 10 or 20 dollar range but they were given to me by friends and they mean a great deal to me because of that so value is very very objective but let's just say okay we're not going to consider any of that we're just going to consider I'm going to go out and buy a pipe today And let's think about this from the standpoint of a, you know, relatively new pipe smoker. You know, maybe you got a few Graybos, maybe you picked up some eBay estates and, and you clean them up and you're happy with those. Maybe you got a few cobs, maybe you only have a few cobs. And you're thinking to yourself, these, these pipes are great, but someday I'm going to aspire to something. What is that something? Well, that's also very personal and very objective. For some guys, they're smoking cobs and they're going to smoke cobs until the day they die and they're happy about that. For them, maybe the value is in the experience more than anything else. You know, the 
taste of the tobacco, uh, maybe getting together with friends and smoking them. Maybe they, maybe they only smoke when they go out hunting or fishing or something, you know, and, and, and so the value is something really different. But let's say you're you're not satisfied with that. You want you want to be a real pipe smoker, which is stupid because you are a real pipe smoker. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're smoking a corn cob pipe and 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 Captain Black that you pick up at the drugstore, you're a real pipe smoker. There, there's it's nonsense to say otherwise. But you got this idea that. You're gonna you're gonna get that pipe someday. For a lot of guys, it might be a birth year downhill. You know, a lot of guys really want that, and I understand. Um, I don't own any downhills, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, and I don't really have a great desire to find a birth year downhill. If one fell into my lap, I'd say, okay, great, I got one now. You know, I can add that to the Sorry to use the C word, but the collection. Um, for other guys, it might be a an artisan pipe. Might, 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 maybe, maybe folks want many artisan pipes. Or it might be some historically important pipe from the Danish era or something like that. Yeah, Every, Everybody's going to have their own criteria. of what that sort of next step in pipe smoking looks like to them. If they have one. They have one. So then you have to start to think about, okay, what what are you actually getting for your money? What is the what is the thing that you're buying? And you're not just buying a chunk of wood with a piece of rubber stuck in it. That's not what you're buying. At that point, you know, maybe when you first start out, that's what you're buying. And as long as it's engineered properly, that's great. But now you're buying an experience. You know, you're buying something. You're buying a mystique. You're thinking about it the, the same way you might be buying a car. You know, uh, yes, I could buy that. Uh, that. Does anybody remember Yugo? Yeah, I could buy that Yugo, uh, but what I really want is uh, a Maserati. So if we're talking about briar pipes, I, I think about it in different, sort of different levels based on who's making it. You know, so you've got you're, you're already, I'm, I'm going to make a couple of definitions here, and these are my personal definitions. I'm not trying to teach you anything right now. I'm just talking about these concepts and, and how I think about them. And you may think about them very differently, and that's great. So you got your artisan pipes. You know, the, these are uh, artisan pipe makers. You know, these are guys that are sitting there by themselves, maybe with with another guy, maybe with another girl. Uh, you know, and we, we, there's lots of cases of that, husband and wife teams. And they're making pipes by hand. And that's what they do. You know, that's, that's their job. They're, they're not doing this as a hobby. So you've got folks like um, Trevor Talbert, who we talked to a few weeks ago. Um, Chess Jonowitz, who, who was the guy in the bumper of this. Uh, Jeff Grasick, uh, Jay Mouton, uh, Phil Rivara. I'm missing a lot, obviously, because there's probably thousands of them. But you know, that, that's the kind of guy I'm talking about. You know, they're making pipes, and that's what they do. Now, in some cases, you move up to sort of a high production scale artisan. So that's going to be people like NIRAP, where you know, NIRAP's a rel relatively small uh, company. I think it's just uh, 
Peter Jepsen and his son. I, I think that's it. But they've come up with a way to turn out high quality pipes at a reasonable cost. Um, and when you when you buy one of these nirps and uh, Paul Winslow is another one that I would put into this category. And I don't know if he's working with anyone or if it's just him. But again, he's he's got a um, I hate to say budget line, but but he's got his high end pipes and then he's got a, a line that smokes just as well has his name on it but it's not you know maybe the green characteristics are different um trevor talbert talked about his uh uh ligne britannia line which is you know these these stumbles that he was able to find old french stumbles um very high quality that he turns into pipes uh, that he can sell for less than one that he's starting with a block of briar so th that in that category, you're still getting a really well-made, really high-end, you know, some, something that somebody looked at, something that somebody uh, sweated every detail over. But you're getting it for a more reasonable price that might be more affordable for a lot of folks. And, and that's fantastic. Then you've got your factory pipes. And I'm just going to loosely lump factory pipes all together here. And I'm defining them by, by two criteria. One is the, the level of production. So certainly Savinelli is, is a factory pipe. Peterson is a factory pipe. Dunhill is a factory pipe. Um, but also in terms of, of quality control. So you've got a lot of companies like uh, Radice, Costello, um, all, all of these what you would call higher end Italian, um, as, as well as many others. And they're all falling into this category of, of factory pipes because their quality control can be a bit hit or miss. They're, 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 they all smoke fine, they're, they're great, but they got that name on them and therefore the, the, the price goes up. So you got you got sort of two tiers of factory, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You've got the factory pipes like Savinelli and probably Peterson, you know, where the, where the prices are pretty reasonable. They're producing a lot of pipes. And then you got the sort of mystique uh, factory pipes, the Dunhills, the Costellas, and others. And that's about it. So where does value lie there? Well, value kind of has one of these curves that goes up and then comes back down again, you know, interestingly. Um, Savinelli makes fantastic pipes. There's no question about it. They've got very high standards, very high quality control. Uh, they're factory pipes. The grain is not perfect on them. You know, they, they don't, you know, there's probably flaws. There's fills, you know, and some some of them are rusticated for that reason. Some of them have very dark stains on them for that reason. That's fine. That's, you know, it doesn't hurt the smoking quality of the pipe. But there's really, in my opinion, there's no other company that's making factory pipes that have that level of quality control. Uh, Rossi is owned by Savinelli, and they're, they're okay. They're, they're, they're pretty okay. Um, but a lot of the, you know, the mystique makers, uh, the mystique factories, are uh, their quality control has really fallen off in, in recent years. So there's a lot of value in a in a Savinelli, there's a lot of value in a near up, in a in a Paul Winslow with his you know larger production grade that I cannot remember the name of. He's got different names and different letters. Um, and and then it starts to drop off because you're paying more money for lower quality. And why would you want to do that? You know, well, maybe you just really want to have a X, well, then go get one, you know, but don't think that you're going to get a better quality, better smoking pipe than you're going to get with the Savinelli. Now, I personally, and, and, and oh, before I go on, that 
that is all tied into the cost. Okay, so so when I was talking about value there, I'm talking about a combination of cost and quality. But then there's the personal experience thing that we started talking about. And from my own perspective, I'm never going to buy another factory pipe. I'm just not going to do it. Um, if I did, it would probably be a 7 LE, but I'm not going to do it. Because I don't need pipes. You know, I do, I do not need another pipe. So if I buy another pipe, it's got to be something special to me. So I'm going to look in the artisan world for another pipe. Um, I'm not trying to build a seven day rotation. I've got that. So I don't have to worry about how am I going to buy seven pipes this year. I might only buy one pipe this year. I might not buy any pipes this year. Well, I've already bought pipes this year, but that, that's beside the point. In the next 365 days, I might only buy one pipe and I might not buy any. So from that point of view, I don't need to save money so that I get to that, you know, $100 or $150 point where I can buy the 7 LE or you know, whatever. I can wait and I can spend three, four, five hundred dollars $500 on a well-made artisan pipe that has a story behind it. And that story to me is the most important part at this point. So when I buy an artisan, I'm getting you know, good quality. I'm getting attention to grain. I'm getting excellent fit and finish. You know, you, you look at pipes by any of the guys that I mentioned earlier, and you will not find a, a flaw on them. You know, they're, they're perfect. Um, you know, I, I look at pipes from a pipe repair point of view. You know, the, how easy are they to clean? How well does the mortise fit in the tenon? Um, is, is it too tight? Is it too loose? Um, what is the stem material? How well is the button crafted? You know, all, all these sorts of things. The airway. How, how is the airway designed, both in the stem and in the stomach? And I have not seen an artisan pipe that doesn't exceed what I've seen from any factory pipe, whether it be the mystique factory pipes or the standard factory pipes their quality control is nowhere near what an artisan pipe is going to get you and pretty much every artisan pipe i own i have either personally met the person who makes the pipe and been able to shake his hand as i purchased it or i've communicated with them by email in some cases by phone uh, and, and design that pipe in, in a sense. I don't really like to, you know, I want this and this and this and this. I, I'd rather just say I kind of want a billiard, um, but do what you do best because that, that's their job, right? That's what they do. It's not my job to design it. It's their job to design it, and they do it better than I ever could. So when I pick up an artisan pipe, I'm thinking about that. Now, of course, you can, as I said at the beginning, you can get that with any pipe. You know, you can, you always have a story. You know, maybe, maybe the, the gray bow that you bought at Walgreens, uh, you were with your buddy and you guys went fishing that day and it was a great day and then every time you smoke that gray boat That's what you think about. That's that's the same thing So in a sense you might value that gray bow More than you would value uh, You know a really high-end artisan pipe What I'm, I guess I'm trying to get to is that the value is not from the name stamped on it. The value is from the care that's put into it and what you bring to it, the experience that you have around that pipe. So in the end, it doesn't really matter if you're spending 
a lot of money or a little bit of money. You know, it doesn't matter what you can afford. It, it doesn't matter. what the name is and you know, we're not it, it's kind of like do you want to buy a, a, a ford or a, a, a lamborghini you know? what's your goal i want to get to work every day i want to be happy i want to enjoy driving it ford fits all of those I want to feel better about myself and impress my friends. Well, maybe you got to go for the Lamborghini. Huh? And if any of you are driving a Lamborghini, let me know because um, I want I want to hit you up for a loan for my next artisan pipe. All right, guys. I I'm sure I I sure I'm sure I lost a few friends over that one, but. You know, it's my opinion. It, it, I'm not trying to tell you the way you should think. I'm just talking about the way I think. So keep that in mind. By the way, Larry Black at Roadrunner Tamper. This has got to be one of my all-time favorite tampers. And I saw, by, by the way, follow Larry on Instagram, uh, Buttons for Your Britches. Uh, I'll try to remember to put a link down below. Uh, he put out on Instagram the other day, and I, this just struck me as funny. Uh, he, he's making now a tamper rack that you can put these into and I forget how many tampers it holds but it's a it's a little wooden rack that the tampers fit into and I looked at that and I thought why in the world would I need a tamper rack and then I thought oh yeah I've accumulated a few of these haven't I <laughs> so that man single-handedly turned me into a tamper collector to the extent that I now need an accessory that he's producing <laughs> it's amazing uh, but yeah check check out Larry he's uh, He's a great guy, and he, he makes some really, really cool tampers. So before I sign off, tomorrow is Memorial Day here in the United States, uh, a day that's set aside to ostensibly remember the folks that have given their lives for in, in, in battle. And you know, here we think about that as folks that have died to give us the freedom to do what we're doing right now. You know, what I'm doing right now, um, the, the freedom to purchase tobacco, the freedom to purchase pipes, the freedom to have a cookout tomorrow and get together with friends and family and, and talk openly about whatever you want. Uh, things we take for granted sometimes, but we should never take for granted the price that those folks paid for us. So. Keep that in mind tomorrow, please. Keep them in your thoughts, your your, your memories, and, and your prayers. All right, folks, so I'm going to wrap it up now. I'll probably be back on Wednesday with uh, something or the other, and we'll, uh, we'll talk then. So you all take care. Have a great week. And until we speak again, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.